I'm Dave Wurzel and you're watching PHTV4 and we are getting a special update on a big project going on right now. Uh, on my right, we've got Assistant Director of the Parks and Recreation Department here, Joe Smith. Joe, thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, and I think if you're watching, you can tell we are not in an immediately recognizable space. Where are we, Joe? We're <laughs> currently in the women's locker room of the pool. All right. And it might not look like that yet, but it's getting there. Um, so this is kind of important news for the community. Uh, we're wearing sweatshirts or jackets yep. here. It's kind of, we got fall cold weather out, but we're actually talking swimming. Sure are, right. yes. A big project going on for the community, the Payless Pool, right? Yeah. Can you tell us what is happening here in, in general? Like give us a sample of, obviously there's a lot of uh, interior work and some exterior work going on. Yeah, yeah, we are in the middle of what I believe to be our second biggest renovation since the pool was built 53 years ago. Uh, right now we are renovating the entire bathhouse, uh, which includes locker rooms, uh, the office space, storage rooms, and the entrance queue into the pool. So the same then, construction that's going on in this locker room is going on in that locker room. Yep. And the workspace for the staff, that's all getting revamped, that's, renovated. That's right? getting revamped and redone. Uh, we're also adding a second water slide to the existing slide tower, and then a new dry play area as well behind that slide. Okay, so uh, these are some major changes going on. Can you yes. talk about like what, uh, uh, what did they have to happen for a reason? I, you know, I get it. I think yeah. you gave me a clue, 53 years old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the pool 52 years ago was designed for families back then, and it worked well. It served its purpose for a very long time, uh, but Throughout the years, we've seen families struggle to use our facility as they really wanted to. Um, if grandparents were bringing their grandchildren of an opposite sex, they had to either bring them in through a locker room they really didn't want to or send their kids by themselves through the locker rooms. Also, the locker rooms themselves really were not ADA accessible at this point anymore. Uh, the doorways were pretty narrow. Showers were fairly narrow. Uh, the city's always done the best we can to update things throughout the years, but it just reached a point now where something big had to be done. I see the ADA accessible is a big deal. Yeah. And for sure, if a mom is bringing her son or grandparents bringing, you know, a grandson and granddaughter, they have a family place they can walk through now to yep. get to the pool. We'll have two family uh, bathrooms with showers and changing stalls. And another thing to add too, since that pool was built 52 years ago, we have fallen out of code with the Illinois Department of Public Health because their standards change quite a bit. Um, so now we're finally getting back to that. Joe, you mentioned that uh, there are some things happening outside still, some exterior work going on. What, what is that? What's happening in the pool area? Yeah, so the major things we're doing outside is we're gonna add a second water slide to our big slide tower. Uh, that slide tower 15 years ago was built for two slides, so we're finally adding that second slide. It'll be a tube slide, so one that you're totally enclosed with. Uh, behind that used to be a two-tiered wooden deck. Now it's gonna be a concrete, what we're calling a dry play area. It'll have some benches in there, permanent ping pong table, permanent foosball table, uh, and some umbrellas. And then we're also adding an additional shade structure. Oh, okay. So, I mean, a, a lot more. I, I mean, I, the foosball and the ping pong, you're adding some other dimensions yeah. to the uh, yeah. experience here. Well, that's really cool. Uh, so that's a lot going on. And as I look around this space in here, I'm like, okay, there's a lot that has to happen <laughs> here yet. And we're in November and I'm thinking the pool opens, was it like the end of May or so? It'll be the first Saturday in June. It's always, okay. the, it's always the first Saturday after Memorial Day. Okay, so here's the, the big question. You wanna go out on the limb? Are we gonna open on time? <laughs> we will open on time, yes. The project does have a deadline of around mid-April, oh, okay. uh, just because of the grant that we received. There is okay. a deadline to get this project done. Our contractor has assured us that we will meet that deadline. I was gonna say, it probably has to be done just so that you can, uh, and then get the pool actually ready yes. the way your staff would have to prep the pool, yep. right? Yeah, so this part project will have to get complete. Staff will come in, we will prepare the pool, the pump room, uh, get everything good to go. Once the pool is chemically balanced, then the state's gonna to have to come in and do a compliance check since we have changed so many things. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna check everything top to bottom and make sure it meets standards now. Okay, and that'll be that window from April to the first Saturday yes. in June. Yes. Okay, well, good luck. That's really Thank exciting. Uh, it sounds like a lot of great things are going on. And uh, something for the community to look forward to. Yeah, All that'd right. be great. Thank you. Joe, thank you for that update on the pool. Thank good you. luck with the project. Thank you. I'm Dave Wurzel. You've been watching PHTV4. We've been talking with Assistant Director of the Parks and Recreation Department, Joe Smith, about the project at the pool coming 2025. Thank you for watching.